So the day after Steph and I were up here at the shop, the last time that we were here, um, Nick went ahead and cut the rest of these plates out on the plasma table. So we have the fish plates for the top of the frame where that pie cut was, because remember we bent this frame inward. And then he put plates here where we added the new rear frame. So um, everything is fish plated on the inside of the frame and on the outside of the frame and on the top and on the bottom. So that's a lot of finish welding to do now because we also have all the finish welding to do on what the frame where we stretched it. So what Nick is gonna do today is he's gonna come through and put the finishing welds on the frame to get this rigid and secure. And then he's gonna come through and weld all these fish plates into the frame to get this nice and tight. Right now, these cross members are just temporary. They're tacked in place. They're holding the frame at the correct width that we need but we want to make sure that nothing moves once these come out. So we'll end up putting a legit uh, cross member in here before these come out probably, but um, we'll get that done. And then I think we need to get uh, motor mounts now at this point that uh, just naturally key into the front of the frame. And that's where we're going to uh, set those so that we can get this LT1 truck motor put in this frame. That's not happening today, but we'll get all the welding done on this today. So the first thing that I have to do to get the day started is I have to move all of this uh, leftover Volkswagen junk here. I've got to get this pallet that's on the forklift put away so that I can use the forklift. And then I have to get a cherry picker over here to this engine so that I can get this engine suspended and start cataloging and cleaning up the, um, the harness and just general motor stuff that goes along with that. So um, here's a quick montage of all of that. So there's a lot going on with this crate engine. Clearly it was just plucked out of a vehicle. I, I believe it has about 50,000 miles on it and um, it's in really, really good shape. So I'm excited to uh, get this thing cleaned up and put in the bug. But to start our day, we have to get all of this pulled off of it. And a lot of this stuff is pretty straightforward um, as far as labeling is concerned, but it's important to label all of your connections before you remove a harness because it saves you a lot of headache when it's time to put a new harness back on. Even if it's not the same harness, you can lay them out and match them and you can figure out what each connection goes to and where it's supposed to be. And um, this is the kind of work that will save you down the road when it's time to get everything plugged back in. So my goal for today with this motor is to get through every single connector get this harness removed, have all of these labeled, and then um, we can get the harness pulled. Once that's pulled, I'm gonna get the chains hooked up. I'll get this suspended on this cherry picker right here, and we'll get it um, cleaned up. Once that's done, we uh, are ready to get the motor mounts welded into that frame and see how much clearance we're gonna need for this motor. We don't have the uh, 6L80 transmission yet or the Atlas transfer case but we can mock up, I believe, with a 4L80, should be roughly the same size, just to see where our transmission tunnel will go, where our shifters will go. Um, obviously, in the bug, there's no firewall because uh, the original bug had the motor in the back, and so the front was the fuel tank and the spare tire, so it was the trunk in the front of the car. Since we cut all of that out, there's just a big gaping hole now, and we need to know where we're gonna build that new firewall to make it all fit. Um, obviously the things that I'm most concerned about are foot space for pedals and um, how far away the dash is gonna be from the seats because since the firewall is moving back, the seats are moving back, the pedals are moving back, the driver and passenger will be set way far back in the car, but the dash is still flat on the front of the car. So that's either gonna be cut out and set back so that we can reach the steering column, see the gauges, do all that stuff, or um, we're just going to cut it out and build a new one that kind of conforms to the driver's legs and brings everything a little bit closer. So 
This is step one of that process so that we can kind of build the ergonomics of the car and um, save ourselves a little bit of headache. So on the back of this motor, we can see on the cylinder head here that this is an L86. So that's a 2015 to present Cadillac Escalade motor. And it is the 6.2 liter. I believe it's 460 foot pounds of torque and 420 horsepower at the crank. So um, that's a significant amount of power considering that this car is extremely lightweight. Obviously you've seen us move this body with just two people and uh, we can move the frame with two people. So there's gonna be a lot more weight added to it. Obviously you have to consider the weight of the drive line, the weight of the axles and the weight of those huge tires that'll be in it. And we'll have, you know, seats, uh, the cooling system, fuel, all that stuff. But this is normally pulling around an Escalade full of kids to go to the soccer game. Uh, but it's an overpowered uh, piece of equipment for what we're gonna be using. So we will definitely not be lacking. All right, guys, so I have a time limit for everything I do in the shop. And sometimes if I can't find something, I'll just improvise so that I can keep my progress up. I live an hour and a half away from here and I only get to work in the shop one day a week. So I try and get as much done as I possibly can. On this wiring harness, I wanted to use a label maker, but I couldn't find the label maker anywhere. So I just decided to use Sharpie and blue tape. And then once I was almost done, Nick found the label maker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zip through this really quick, replace my tape with labels. These um, can be left on the harness and they'll last a lot longer. So uh, it's better to just swap them out really quick. But um, I'm gonna get through this harness and once everything is labeled, I'm gonna take pictures of all the labels and then we'll pull this harness out of here. So uh, here we go. All right guys, so progress update on the labeling. I have every sensor now labeled, coolant temp, map sensor, evap purge, um, everything is uh, marked, ECMs. Um, we have everything kind of covered so that we know where everything will go. Now that everything has a label on it, the next step is to photo catalog everything. So I have to take a photo of every single one of these labels, where it's at, so that there's some reference point. Uh, when it's time to put the new harness back on, we can take a look at these images and see, oh, okay, so there's a knock sensor on both sides of the motor and the harness crosses and this and that, and see where our transmission and uh, transfer case harnesses are here and, and, and everything. So um, now that it's all done, uh, the photo catalog should be pretty quick. I'll rip through that, take a picture of everything for our own personal record, and then we can get to pulling this harness off of the motor. So now that everything has been photo cataloged, I'm pulling the harness off the motor and um, getting everything laid out. We have diagrams that we can follow online, but it makes it much easier to have everything already figured out when you're pulling it off. While I'm doing this, Nick is welding on the frame still and getting all of those um, gussets and frame connections sealed up. He did take a break earlier and just let the frame cool back down and now he's uh, back at it again. So we're double teaming this right now and making a ton of progress. Update. My mess continues to grow. I've got my battery tray here, my heater hoses, the AC lines, the starter, positive and negative battery cables, um, and then most of the harness on the ground here. But there's part of the harness that I can't reach because it's underneath the motor which is currently sitting on a tire so it's time to bring in the cherry picker get this thing hoisted off the ground and pull the remaining pieces off of it everything is off of this motor now and i have it currently suspended by the forklift just to get it off of this pallet and tire that it was shipped on now that it's hanging i'm going to pull the motor mounts off of it and um, kind of get it cleaned up a little bit and then come around the back here i'm going to pull this torque converter and uh, flex plate off so once torque, torque converter flex plate and motor mounts are off, we'll have this thing cleaned up. We'll start working on getting the new motor mount brackets into this JK frame. And uh, pretty soon here, we'll be putting this motor into that frame and seeing 
just how much it doesn't fit. <laughs> I have low hope that we're going to be able to get this thing even near where it needs to be without cutting a ton of this bug apart, but um, we shall see. So time will tell. All right, guys, that does it for today. I think we're at a pretty good point. We can't finish welding the rest of this frame because we have to kind of run it through heat cycles. We don't want to do all the welding at once. Um, and so we have kind of our first pass done on a lot of these um, fish plates here, but the, you know, the remaining welds across the outside edges of these main fish plates, stuff like that. We have to wait for this to cool down. So we're actually just going to circle back to this next Monday and finish these welds off. Over here on the motor, I got the torque converter pulled. So it's right there on the ground. I left the flex plate on. Um, this is actually an eight bolt main on this thing. So it's, this is a pretty stout motor here, but um, that's where I'm leaving off on this too. We have uh, pretty much everything stripped off of it that we need to strip off. I might come back and get these oil cooler lines off and take the uh, accessories drive off a little bit more, but for the most part, that's good to go. Um, and then once we finished, what we needed to do on the motor and on the frame, we came over here and we took some more measurements again to see where this is all gonna land once we get it in the frame. We're gonna probably end up cutting almost all of this front wheel well out. Um, and then we'll take a look at what we need to do for the firewall. We're probably gonna end up moving that firewall back quite a bit, but that will be um, our next day in the shop. So recap for today, I got in here, pulled that motor down, got it all cleaned up and on the cherry picker. And Nick got all these welds uh, mostly finished on this frame. And we got everything measured for the engine. So pretty productive day. Um, obviously we have a lot of stuff left to do. So um, I'm excited to get back in here next Monday and keep at it. Uh, I will keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching.